All right, so today we're gonna go through how to use tells on your desktop and your mobile. So we're gonna start off on desktop. So as you can see on my screen, I have logged into tells.net. I'm using one of our buildings named Clifton Oaks as an example. But all of these instructions will translate to just about any building you're at. And if they don't, reach out to me and we'll make a video special tailored to you. So you come through here and I'm just gonna click one. I want one that requires a log to explain. So you click into it and it pulls up the task. So over here to the right are all of the related tags that you could get. It's a good way to read up on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then you go over here, you can log your time, you can log your material costs, and then here are your instructions on how to complete this task. If you don't feel like these instructions are adequate, feel free to reach out to us. We will work with you to get photos of your item, your asset, and then we will special make a training for that item. So this is great. Uh, it's very uh, all-inclusive. But if you feel like something isn't touched on for your specific uh, facility, let us know and we'll custom make that so that it can be more tailor-made for you uh, and if you're just new and you don't know how to do it, let us know and we'll make it happen. So, when you're performing the generator test with no load, you have to go through several steps. Um, but what you're going to do, once you've completed the steps, is you're going to go up here on the right and you're going to click Log Entry. So when you click Log Entry, it's going to pull up your logbook. So you go through, you can either type in the date or you can click it over here on the calendar. So today is the 7th. We're going to say I completed on the 7th. My start time was 1.30 in the afternoon. My end time, we'll say I finished five minutes ago. My end time was 1.55 p.m. And then you're going to enter in things that are specific to your generator. So you're going to enter in hour meter readings for start, end, and you're just going to enter in all this data that can be found on your generator. If you have any comments, put them in right there, and then you're going to click complete. I'm not going to click complete because this is a training exercise, and I don't want to mess up Clifton Oaks facility maintenance director, so I don't want to mess him up, so I'm going to go over here and click cancel. But if I were to have completed it, that would then mark that task complete, which I would then come out here to my main dashboard. And I would go over here to my main dashboard and it would no longer show emergency generator with no load. So that's how you do it with a log. And then you can scroll down and you will occasionally get another one, another type of tasks. This says right here, requires doc. So that requires some form of documentation that you will have printed out and completed. And you go right here, you click into it. So we're going to find one that says requires doc, and here's one right here. So we click into it, and it, again, right here, related tags, it's going to explain the tags related to it. Down at the bottom, it'll have instructions on how to complete it. And this task in particular, you have to have it certified by an outside contractor. So that contractor will then give you a piece of paper that shows what he did uh, and all of his findings, essentially. And what you'll do is you will, if you have a printer scanner in your office, you'll scan that in, save it to your computer, and then upload it right here in the documents. If you don't have a printer or scanner, just go to your uh, administrator, your ED, your business office manager, just have them scan it in for you and email it. And then you download it from your email, 
click right here to click here to drag and drop documents to upload. Click that and it's gonna bring up the different, it's gonna bring up your browser essentially. Whether you have Windows or Mac or whatever, you just navigate through that, find the doc and upload it. So we'll just click any of these just for now. So we'll click open and it's gonna upload it. If you don't want to navigate, it does have a way to drag and drop. So we will upload this report right here. You click it, drag it over, and just drop it. And then it uploads the document just like that. Same, same product, just a different step to get there. So I will cancel that out once it finishes, but then you would just cl click complete right here and the task will be marked complete and you will not, it won't go red. So it won't be overdue. So let me delete that. And if you need to upload multiple documents, that's why this cleared back out. So you can then click back into it and uh, upload more. So we'll back out of that again to not mess up Clifton Oaks. All right. And then, so that, that pretty much covers what I can think of for the tasks tab. Next, we're going to go over to the work orders tab. So give me just a second. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the work orders tab. Once you click into that, it'll bring up any work orders that anyone in your building has submitted. If you are a member of our CAP membership, we will sometimes create work orders for you in things that um, don't fit into our report. So if we find something that needs to be fixed, we have access to your tells, we'll log in, create a work order for your building, and it'll appear on your work order to-do list to be then completed. So let's just click into any of these. Here's one, head of bed not working. So you click into that. It shows who requested it, who it was assigned to, any notes that need to be made, and the location, which is super big. So if you create a work order without assigning a location, say you're a nurse, and you create a work order for your maintenance director to go complete, these buildings are big, and he could maybe not find, he or she may not be able to find your location, they can't find you, or you didn't even put who created it. So then this resident is left with an undo task. So you want to go, you want to be very, very um, detailed when you're creating these. So this is just how to view it. Um, you can go through, log how long it took you to complete this work order, how much it costs you. Um, if it has a repair history, you can view all repair histories and then you can determine, man, this bed cost X amount of dollars. We've almost spent X amount of dollars in repairs. You don't want to keep basically repairing a sinking ship. You want to be able to present this data to your ED or your administrator and how you can save money for the facility in the long term by investing in a new asset. So, and if you have any pictures to upload, same exact process as the work orders. You just click, find what you need to upload and upload it, or drag and drop. So I'm gonna back out of this so as to not mess up Clifton Oaks. And then another big thing, oh, and if you don't even need to click into it, you can just click that check mark right there and that will mark it as complete as well. But that's a little dangerous because then you can't upload photos, you can't log how long it took you, how much it costs you, and stuff like that. So you wanna go into the more detailed version. And then another very key thing is how to add a work order. So when you click into that, we will click into summary and we'll type in replace outlet cover in conference room so area you will then scroll through if yours does not exist you can uh, type something in so i'll type in conference room and then you can use it one time so you can click that and that'll explain to your maintenance director where it's at but i'm not gonna go into it and mess up anything for clifton oaks requested by hunter abrams Assigned to uh, Doug Pitvorek is the maintenance director at Clifton Oaks, so I'll assign it to him. I can add any additional notes 
um, because even though it's in the conference room, there are 15 outlets in here. So I'm going to type in, it's the left outlet underneath the whiteboard. Left outlet under whiteboard. So that Doug doesn't have to waste his own time coming in, having to figure out which one it is, and being able to identify, okay, it's that outlet right there. That's the one I need to replace. So you want to make as many notes as you can. Um, location, that's where you would, the area, the area and location get a little bit blurry. Just communicate the location as best you can. So then due date, you can say, hey Doug, we need to have this done uh, by this Friday. So you then go into the calendar and click, I want it done by June 11th. And then you can add a priority. Typically something like an outlet cover, use your best judgment to, to use the priority because you don't want to become the boy who cried wolf and mark everything as critical. And then nothing becomes critical anymore and Doug doesn't know what to do. So you want to be, you want to be smart on how you do this. Category, is it administrative? Is it calibration? Is it cleaning, drain cleaning? What is it? This is administrative. Actually, I would say this is general maintenance. So we'll click general maintenance. There is no repair history for this location. I don't know how long it's taken him, what it's cost him. I just know that I need to upload photos of it. So again, this is an area where creating a work order on your desktop is not ideal. Um, it'd be much, much smoother to use your phone, which I'll get into in a few minutes. But if you were to use your desktop, you could then take a photo on your phone, email it to your desktop, and then bring it over. Let's see if I have any photos I can upload real quick. My wife and I just had our first baby, so we will upload a photo of the baby just to have a picture in there. So you just drag it and drop it, and it will upload. My internet's acting a little funny, so it's not going to work right now, but when you do it, it will work. If it doesn't, let me know. So you can make a comment. You can then send a notification to different people in the building. You can add additional contacts, but that's getting into a lot. So we're going to cancel this work order, and then we're going to get into... Here's a really, really key tab for training. So if you click into training, this is a place where you can go down here. This I right here is really key. So this video, um, I cannot give you the TELS master certificate, but TELS can. They can give you the masters for their software. So you click into here and it will help you create an account and then you can do their, I think they're calling it TELS University. And you can take all these classes and take quizzes and make sure that you pass and then you can become a TELS master. Um, it's very useful. Don't take this video as the end all be all. Please complete the Tales Masters. Very, very helpful resource. Great uh, product by Direct Supply. So, there's all kinds of resources in here. I invite you to come through um, and see what you have at your fingertips so that you are able to best do your job because this is very, very, very useful. But we're going to back out of it and we can click into reports. And then a work history report is key. So I remember we had a building over in the Eastern United States that needed to have a work history report on carpets being cleaned to avoid a tag. So we were able to jump in for them real fast because they were actually without a maintenance director at that time. We were able to come through and find uh, carpeting. We clicked, I don't know if Clifton Oaks has carpeting so this might not bring up anything. But we were able to click category carpeting and then run report, and it brought up all of the previous tasks that were completed by the staff, this specific site, and it pulled up all the times they cleaned their carpet. Very helpful, helped them avoid a tag. It was great, huge win. Um, but Clifton Oaks doesn't have any carpet, so it's not gonna work right here. But this is where it's always key to document, document, document. Complete your logs upload documentation when possible because what was able to show the inspector in this case that the carpets were cleaned was they had reports written at every time they cleaned the carpet they made notes uh, we cleaned the spot here we did this we ran it at this time we finished at this time and they had all this great backup documentation backup documentation um, and we were able to pull it up and export it all and email it over to them and the inspector was able to flip through it and see all of the completed items Again, 
the, a software is only as good as what you put into it. If for some reason you choose to lie to Tails to make your administrator think that you're doing good and you just mark things as complete and you didn't really do it and you do that a lot, I don't know why you would. It's just easier to do your job. Eventually you get caught up in lies and it, it just gets sticky. It's as good as what you put into it. This will make your job so much easier if you do it right. If you do it right, it's great. This will essentially, I know some AHJs require a paper binder and they wanna see all of your um, documentation in paper. So you need to abide by your local AHJ. But this has the potential to completely replace your binders and make your job so seamless you never have to worry about, well, I did my fire drill, I just forgot to put my fire drill in my binder and I lost it now. You do your fire drill, you take a picture, you upload it, and it's there forever. And you'll be able to access it super easily. So now, I'm gonna jump over onto my phone and we're gonna go through the basics of what the Tails app on your phone can do, which is mostly tasks and work orders. But the phone streamlines the photo and documentation upload process. So I think that's really, really key for maintenance directors and helpers to be able to go through, boom, I fixed the outlet cover, take a picture, and go. So we're gonna jump into that real quick. I'm gonna shut my computer and put it to the side. And we are going to jump onto my phone right here. Let me get into the Tells app. Tells mobile app, which is really going to help you streamline stuff and do and complete tasks and work orders on site and store documentation really easily. So we're gonna. I've got Clifton Oaks pulled up here again, same building as before. We're gonna go through. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to complete logs in a task, how to upload documents, and how to mark them as complete. So let's see. Emergency power generators. Exercise generator with no load. It's the exact same one we did earlier. So you wanna scroll down and click log entry. And then you're gonna go through and input all the same information that we did on my computer earlier. And you're gonna then click save. Again, not gonna do it because that can then uh, mess up the actual building on site and I don't wanna mess Doug up. So, you would log entry, click save. And then you would mark as complete down here in the bottom right, which I'm not gonna do. So that's how you complete a log. Different logs are gonna ask different questions, but once you know how to access them, they're all pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna back out and we're gonna find a task that requires a uploaded document. All right, so we're gonna scroll down there's not one here for a while, so we need to get down past their water management tasks. Water management, right there. Ansel systems have fire suppression system inspected by outside contractor. So, same thing as the computer, except now the document uploading is much faster. Instead of taking a picture on your phone, emailing it to your computer, uploading it, to the site, you just click right here. You click Add Document. You're gonna title it um, Ansel, not Abdul, Ansel System Servicing. Click Return, and then click Add Page. So you click Add Page right here, and it pulls up your camera. It may ask you, allow Tells to use your camera, allow access to microphones, stuff like that. You can just click allow. So then we're gonna use my business card as an example. So we take the photo and then click use photo and we'll call that page one. So now we go down here to add page and we need to take a photo of page two of his report. Take the photo, use photo, and now we have page one and page two of my report from my certified contractor. So you click save, which I'm not gonna do, and that would upload the document. So then you just mark complete in the bottom right, and you have now marked that task as complete. You have uploaded the necessary documents. 
simple, much, much simpler than the computer. Um, but I understand if you're more comfortable using a computer, it just adds a few steps. I would encourage you to learn this. So we back out. That explains how to mark tasks as complete, how to complete logs, and how to upload documentation. So now we're gonna jump over to the other big part of the Tells mobile app, and that's work orders. So we're gonna go to the exact same work order as before. I believe it was a head of a bed not working. So head of bed not working. Click into that, they've marked it as a medium priority. You would go through um, to show that you completed it. You would maybe wanna take a photo of it elevated to show, hey, it's working now, it'll raise up, or hey, it'll raise down or lower. You would then click add image, take photo, same thing. Snap the photo, use photo, there it is. I'm going to delete that and back out of it so I don't mess Doug up. So the other thing is how to complete a work order. So you click create down here in the bottom right. And this is how you create a work order. You would type in, I'm not going to go through all this again because we did it on the computer, but it's the exact same process. You mark what you need done. You set an area, you assign it, you mark who you are, who's it being requested by, and then you mark assign to. You assign it to somebody in your building. And the reason you put those two in particular is say you noticed an area where the paint was chipped in the dining room. And there's a ton of wall space in there and you want your maintenance director to go touch up the paint there. He may not be able to find it, so he needs to know who, he or she needs to know who assigned it so that they can go through and touch up the paint. So it might be a bit more information than is available in this app. But when you're creating, you wanna show where something is wrong. So you would click images, click add image, take photo, same thing. Take a photo, use it, and there it is. Mark a note, whatever needs to be explained. And it's just so much easier when you're creating a work order to do it like this. It just speeds things up so much. Set your due date, Set your priority, always be touchy on priority, never set things as critical that aren't critical. And then you can link an asset if possible if your building has used the asset tagging feature of Tails. Um, do you have any comments? And then the maintenance director will then log their time spent and material costs. And then you would click submit and that would create your work order. I'm gonna leave this. So that explains the um, the, the flow of the Tails mobile app. So I believe that encompasses pretty much all of it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. We can create videos just like this, just for your building to explain how to do things. Our team is very qualified to help walk you through things. We're a team of previous maintenance directors, environmental service directors. Um, we just, our team can help you. We've been where you are. We're here to be an asset to you and help your job go easier. So that wraps up this training video for Direct Supply Tells, mobile and desktop. If you have any questions, reach out. Um, if not, have a great day.